What if there were pockets of time, not only during your steps, but between your steps, that your body and your skills could be equipped for? What if this secret was what you've been needing to unlock your ability to read and react off the dribble? Welcome to another whiteboard session, where today we will take a deep look at this dribble cycle. Hey guys, this is Michael Lancaster with I'm Possible Training and welcome to another whiteboard session. Now in today's whiteboard session, we're gonna be going over a topic that you probably have never dove into details before and you may have never discussed it before, which is simply the ball handling cycle. We're gonna be looking at ball handling patterns and really see why you can or can't react in any given moment. Now really what I want you to do really quickly is think about what a normal dribble timing would be for you. And so as a player walks the ball up the floor, they would typically have their dribble, then they start to take a step in between, and then they have another dribble. And so that pattern would simply be a dribble step, and then a motion step, a dribble step, and then a motion step. That's what's normal. Now obviously there's times where in the game where you're gonna take multiple steps between dribbles, but we're looking at a normal pattern of simply running the basketball up the floor and really starting to understand what happens in all those little pockets of time to allow a player to read and react. And if you're the type of player who can't read and react in these moments, this is gonna be a video that will be especially helpful for you. And of course, if you like content like this, please do us a favor, please like, comment, and subscribe. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at this pattern under a microscope to understand that it's way deeper than just having a dribble step and then a motion step. Because really there's pockets of time where you can start making decisions. Now the first pocket of time we're gonna look at is when the inside foot crosses the threshold. Now I know that sounds advanced, let me just go ahead and simplify this. If you think about my outside foot and I'm in the middle of a drive right now, my inside foot's gonna start crossing the threshold of that foot. So pause this moment in time, the ball's in my pocket, I haven't made my step yet, can you actually read and react in this moment in time? Now what are those options? In that moment in time, you could do an inverted skip and you can do an inverted hip swivel. Now, of course, those sound detailed, those sound maybe terms that you might not know, but that's why the videos on the screen will be so helpful during this presentation. But that's obviously something you can do during this initial step, right as the inside foot crossed the threshold. And then of course, you have another set of options once that foot hits the floor and as you complete the dribble step. Now the dribble step is what we call the timing of the dribble with the inside foot. That's the natural, most common timing in the game of basketball. As a player is dribbling up the floor or running up the floor, the ball will hit right as, or right before the inside foot hits the floor. And at that moment in time, you have a whole nother set of options where you can skip, which is most common, or you can heavy step and start to change pace. Now when you really study dribble steps, this is where you find most players make all their reads right here. And if you're the type of player that only makes reads right here, it means you have to wait all the way until your next dribble step in order you, for you to read and react again. So what happens to a lot of players, if they don't have the ability to read and react in these moments, then of course that's when turnovers happen or they simply can't make the right plays. So that's why we wanna have the ability baked into our body and our skills to be able to react in any of these pockets of time. So let's go ahead and move on. I've completed my dribble step and as simple as this is, my outside foot starts to run and it will start to cross the threshold of my inside foot. Now in between those steps at that very moment, what else can you do? Well, if you're equipped, you'll have the ability to be able to hip swivel there and you'll be able to do a late skip all in that moment of time. And then of course, you're gonna go ahead and complete that motion step. That's what we refer to the step in between your dribble. And now while the ball is still in your pocket, you have another set of options that can present themselves. If you've worked on them and if you have them in your skill sets, you can do an inverted skip or you can do an inverted heavy step. And then of course that plays right back into what we discussed first is the inside foot will cross the threshold again. So this is obviously a repeatable cycle that will continue. Now here's what's special about it. If you have the ability to have these sets of footwork for instance, now you have the ability to read and react at any single one of these moments. And when you really look at the game like this, you'll realize that after your dribble, you're gonna have three different times, three different moments where you'd have the ability to react and make decisions before your next dribble. And this is really what separates the best from the good. And this is really what creates special players because they have so much skills in their body, so much skills with their feet and their ability to react that any moment they simply have the ability to make decisions. So that's the ball handling cycle. 
And if you have the ability to have all this different footwork and all these different options in your game, now instead of only making your decision in this moment in time, you can make your decision in every moment in time. But it starts first with your ability to equip your, your footwork and your skills for those simple techniques. In the game of basketball, even the simple concept of dribbling the ball up the floor is more detailed than you know. It requires more skill than you realize when it comes to making decisions, reads, and reactions. And that's the ball handling cycle for another whiteboard session. And of course, if you like content like this, please do me a favor, please like, comment, and subscribe. The biggest lie you've ever been told about your development is that you need a system that is perfectly customized to who you are as a player. That might be the case for game situational training that you get from your coaches, but it's not the case when it comes to mastering your skills. The game of basketball is made up of skills, and those same skills are available for everyone. And if you want to be special and separate yourself in this game, then we've created a checklist training system to help you become one of the world's most skilled basketball players. This is the same system that we've used with over 100 NBA players, multiple NBA teams, and middle school, high school, and college players all over the world. And it works for everyone. We are the world's premier specialists in creating skill in basketball players, and this is the world's number one online skill training platform, the I'm Possible Cloud. Helping create the world's most skilled basketball players, one check at a time.